folks, Just Face of Bora here. I'm doing a movie review this week in the month of October since it's Halloween month. And I went to see the movie last week with my family because we needed to spend some time. And it's actually the latest sequel, which I'm going to start with the more familiar tune that you'll never forget, and no one else would. And it goes like this Do, 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 do. Do 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 The creepy and the kooky, mysterious and spooky, they're all together ooky, the Adams family two Yes the sequel to the two thousand nineteen CGI animated feature that's released by MGM and Braun Media where we get to see the Adams family themselves, Gomez Adams, along with his wife, Patricia, um, joining in with their siblings, Pugsley and Wednesday, their relatives, Uncle Fester and Grandmama, along with the butler, Lurch, and Fiend, <laughs> the hand that just walks around. <laughs> And who couldn't forget Cousin It, where you can only see his entire head <laughs> with shades and, and a top hat. <laughs> okay. As we all know, based upon the um, Charles Adams um, comic that he came up with a long time ago, and which he came up with it, the story, and this time around, the Adams family is about to head off on a road trip. Apparently they were going to go to Salem, but it turns out they're about to head off to several places because, well, it did lead off to a subplot involving, well, here's the twist. It involves Wednesday. <laughs> okay. Um, this time around... Um, now that we finally have a sequel that I didn't expect it to finally get, but I'm glad we did because the first one did actually uh, gross uh, over 200 and million worldwide. And it's great to see that I knew for the fact that we we're going to get one. <laughs> and I'm happy that we did because otherwise, you know, who knows what, what they're going to do next. Um... Unfortunately, though, because I know the first movie got mixed reviews, but I still enjoy the film, nevertheless. I mean, yeah, I may have a little bit of issues, but that's okay. I can live with those. I still think it's a fun movie. The animation is perfect for it, because at least this is based upon that. And it actually gives it the, the more satirical, you know, creepy vibe to it. You know, going for the more macabre type. And that's what they were trying to do you know, for that spirit. So I guess they knew they were going to go for this one. Um, but they're doing something new for a change. But it still has the, the particular humor as we, we speak. Yeah, which unfortunately this one's getting negative reviews. Mostly because they're criticizing the humor and the story by itself. Um, but so far, it's grossed 35 million worldwide. Um, hopefully, it'll it'll continue, even though, despite the fact that since now they're releasing this movie not only in theaters but also on video on demand. So, in case you know, this will be safer for those who who want to just stay home and watch the movie for themselves. It was due to the, once again, COVID-19 pandemic and the SARS-CoV-2 Delta variant that's going on. So they want to keep the family safe so they don't, they don't end up getting sick. But I'm sure people are going to already get their vaccines, so, or even the fact that they're still going to be wearing masks and all. Hoping they'll try to be careful because I know there's going to be another cold season coming around. Well, anyway, and I guess I could see why, because they had different writers this time. They they didn't bring back Matt uh, Lieberman, 
you know, who just recently wrote uh, Free Guy, and he also had done other stuff too, like the Christmas Chronicles two, one and two. So, so this time they got writers uh, Dan Hernandez, uh, along with Benji Samet, Ben Queen, and Susanna Fugo. And I know they, and they, they actually, the two writers, uh, Dan and Benji, had actually worked on Pokemon Detective Pikachu just recently, so I figured maybe some of the humor might be in there, and and while the other two writers, they just basically worked on pretty much the car sequels, and the other one just did um, Booksmart and The Spy Who Dumped Me, so I don't know how this is going to turn out, so maybe that was the case, <laughs> and they also had a different actor this time, they didn't get... Um, Brent uh, Wolfhart from Stranger Fanes to reprise the role as Pugsley. They got a different actor this time, and and I think he was in um, Euphoria and Utopia. I don't know. Yeah, name uh, Jawan Bolton. So there you go. Okay, so let's begin with the review, and I'll, I'll explain about it. The movie stars uh, Oscar Isaac. Uh, Charlie's Farron, Chloe Grace Moretz, Nick Kroll, Jarvon Walton, Bette Midler, Conrad Bernan, along with Dominic Lewis, uh, Snoop Dogg, <laughs> Bill Hader, Wallace Shawn, Ted Evans, and Jeremy Lee. Yep, it's written by Dan Hernandez, Benji Summit, Ben Queen, and Susanna Fugel. And it's directed by Greg Tenen and Conrad Burnin. And by the way, it does feature the brand new MGM logo, which was actually uh, shown first in the movie Respect. Yeah, the Aretha Franklin uh, biography. I haven't seen the movie yet, but it's great to see that... That the logo is being shown, um, especially when I had to see it on the big screen. <laughs> yeah, so I'm sort of getting used to that logo. But I was expecting the, a variant uh, for the Adams family, just like how they did in the first movie. You know, because they had a pet lion. The movie begins set at school, where Wednesday attempts to do her latest experiments uh, at the science fair where she uses her pet squid, Saltzkratz, taking the DNA on Uncle Fester to show how humans can improve by actually using all the skills and the mind craft of having to use a Rubik's Cube to actually you know, put them all together to match um, exactly right. You know, like she ends up feeding the Fester all the Rubik's Cubes to see his Sotskrats can actually match all those uh, Rubik's Cubes together inside the tank. But much to her dismay, her family, you know, Gomez Adams, the husband, along with uh, his wife, uh, Morticia, and their son, Pugsley, had showed up. I think Lurch and, and Faye might have shown up as well. They're just about to, but most likely it was just them. They're about to watch um, her presentation, hoping that she'll be able to win the science fair, if that was the case. Which, I know, there's a scene where Pugsy winds up uh, going inside uh, one of her classmates' uh, volcano experiment, which apparently went completely wrong, because everything was on fire throughout the entire auditorium before that actually happened. Um... Her work is is getting noticed by a scientist named Cyrus Strange, who somehow appeared in a hologram. And while everything was on fire, yeah, that's where we see Gomez and Patricia just dancing <laughs> the night away. <laughs> that was really funny. But back at the Adams' home, Gomez suddenly feels very worried that the children are drifting apart between him and Patricia. So, in order to make this up, he decided to take them on a family vacation, joining in with Fester, Fane, and Lurch 
as they head off on the road trip across the country, which suddenly both Gomez and Matisha are approached by a lawyer named Mr. Mustella, who claims that, well, here's the twist behind everyone's uh, grief here, was that Wednesday isn't really their biological parents. That they might have been switched at birth and may not actually be as we expected in Adams. But they ignored him and they decided to go on the road as they are being pursued by Mustella and his henchman, Pongo. <laughs> so, at first they were going to go directly to Salem, Massachusetts, but Fresser ends up going on a detour to Niagara Falls. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Fing is actually doing the driving. And that's where we begin to feel that Fresser is starting to feel particularly strange because he's not exactly himself. It might have had to do with the experiment that Wednesday had performed on him. That might have been the cause of it. Because now we begin to see that he's going to end up transforming into the squid. Which at this rate, I think that's where we begin to see the tentacles coming out of his arms. Anyway, the family later stops. Um, they're just going around just <laughs> exploring Niagara Falls and then that's where they end up uh, once again getting the pursuit by Mustella and Pongo they keep following them everywhere they go and <laughs> they have, there's a scene in the movie which is very funny because um, this is where Wednesday suddenly uh, uses a voodoo doll on Pugsley and he ends up uh, you know dancing around you know trying to greet with the ladies and just Dancing around to the song Jump Around by House of Pain. <laughs> I thought it worked pretty well for Pugsley. <laughs> a lot of crazy moves that he had to perform while being possessed by Voodoo Dow. That was just <laughs> hilarious. And then they're about to escape from Mutella and Pongo by going straight into the barrels and jump out of it into the Niagara Falls. Yeah, the waterfall so they can get out of there. And now they're about to head off to Sleepy Hollow, New York, where Gomez and Morticia suddenly brings up uh, Lustella and try to claim about Wednesday's um, origin, because that's where Fester mentions the story about what just happened on the day uh, Wednesday was born, where he comes across, you know, just juggling all the babies. You know, just playing around and, and all, just having fun. But this is where he accidentally uh, juggled around to the next uh, bed in the delivery room. So that's where it only worsens for both Gomez and Matisha's fears that it seems to me like, yep, Wednesday might have been switched. And that's where she overheard. And this is where we begin to see what happened. So Gomez brings everyone to Miami to get in touch with Cousin It's. You know, they're just about to head off and just have a great time at the beach, which I know something went wrong. At this point on, because um, once again they're getting followed, they wound up leaving the family early at the Grand Canyon. Uh, yeah, which there was a funny moment in the movie too where, and I know you saw it in the trailers, but that's okay, I'm, I'm just... I still love the scene, nevertheless. It was when Pugsley suddenly set off all the explosives and explode the entire Grand Canyon. <laughs> there's actually a running gag in the movie, too, where um, there's this uh, couple that wants up um, proposing for marriage but ends up getting interrupted and getting knocked out all the time. And it happens pretty much on every single trip. Cause I thought, wow, that was hilarious. But meanwhile, Wednesday trapped Mustella on her own by learning that he was actually working for Cyrus. And this is where we begin to see the twist was that, yes, it turns out Cyrus was actually Wednesday's biological father. That, and he invites her to 
his home in Sausalito, California, which at this rate, uh, Wednesday, along with uh, Lurch, decided to head off uh, by themselves um, just to find uh, Sausalito. And they got bumped into um, all these um, bikers around. Which you thought there, there was going to be a brutal fight. You, know, you see this a lot too. But it never did. It turns out that <laughs> Lurch decided to play the song uh, I Will Survive. <laughs> and they're about to head off too. Also before that, um, they, they even went to, um, to Texas. They were going to go to the Alamo, but it turns out it was just a, a local um, hotel bar. And they actually had a performance um, where, at this rate, there was a scene where, where they have Wednesday, you know, dress off as one of those uh, beauty pageants. And I, I love the scene where she was, she was about to read the mind of, of, a, uh, of a beauty pageant girl. <laughs> and this is the scene where they're just, you know, dancing off and all. And then we begin to see, you know, once again, Botello and Pongo. And they're about to jump off. And um, Wednesday actually uh, set off all the red paint <laughs> on the beauty pageant girls. You know, while they were doing that dance. And they're head off and they're about to escape. So I want to mention that. Anyway, um, by the time... Um, just a good forward to the story here. I mean, by the time Wednesday... Um, and Lurch uh, came to Cyrus's home. He begins to show Wednesday a formula to that he developed to make uh, a human-animal hybrid, and this is where we find his daughter Ophelia, who, who it turns out that she actually created directly from a pig. And of course, Gomez, along with Morticia, were along with Uncle Fester, the fiend. Well, Cousin had already left already, you know, while they were at Grand Canyon, just so he can hang around with the ladies and the helicopter. Um, they're about to find them, and that's where suddenly Pugsy fell in love with Ophelia, and this is where he begins to find out. And then now, fiends go completely wrong that develops a family conflict because now since both Cyrus and Wednesday are together as father and daughter since the DNA had match now he begins to perform his latest experiment by actually trapping her family into this gooey experiment that's going to turn them into an animal human hybrid and at that point on Renze was about to stop him until Uncle Fester arrived on scene, already being transformed into the squid, or at this rate, octopus, I mean, whatever you like to say it. And he was about to battle off um, with uh, Cyrus, who has already been transformed into a chicken, you know, after, you know, Wednesday finally let them out free and got exposed by this gooey slime and now Cyrus has finally got stopped and that's when Wednesday finally faces the truth as she already found out and Gomez apologized to her about what he'd done and how he finally revealed the truth too so everyone had became together again as a family. So now Wednesday is back to becoming an Adams. So now they went back home. Well Grandma Ma is already, you know, celebrating, just having a party of her own, you know, inviting all the guests. And apparently they thought it was a homecoming party, but apparently <laughs> Grandma Ma was just having a party of her own because you know she wanted to take some time off. That was the point of this. So I think everything turned out um, you know, good for the better. <laughs> so 
So, well, it's not exactly as um, great as the 2019 CGI animated feature, but still, I mean, it's a little better at times. I mean, it does have several funny moments that I can think about. Uh, there's even one scene uh, where they were at the beach and Wednesday was actually putting in a device uh, inside the Frisbee by these two boys and then suddenly they got electrocuted <laughs> by the rain cloud. <laughs> or the scene where Fuster suddenly uh, dresses up like a shark. You know, he was just swimming around and somehow turns into another like a parody of, of Jaws and there so that was that was crazy or there's even scenes when Fester suddenly um, begins to uh, have all that all that squid fluid that's coming out of his body so now you already know he's going to be transformed into one and um, so the humor is there yeah, the writing is a bit off base at times. I think the subplot kind of weakens the story, if you think about it, because I know they want to go for exactly another, like, the children has to be away f from their parents, that kind of situation. So they, they feel like they just want to be alone, or maybe they just realize they're not exactly who they really are. And they want to drift it away. They want to. They want to be on their own. You know that kind of story. Uh, so maybe that's kind of what what was the problem with the this movie. But that's okay, because I can live with that. I mean, maybe sometimes there's something different that that can be explained. Otherwise, it could have been just another, you know, generic sequel. I mean, this isn't Hotel Transylvania. I know they had a sequel where they went on a family vacation, but this is the Adams Family. There's a difference. Okay. Um, now, I know they got um, a different voice actor, Javon Walton, to do the voice of Pugsley instead of Win Finn Woodhart, so he did fine. Uh, but it's great that they brought back the the other voice actors, Oscar Isaac, Charlize Theron, Chloe Grace Moretz, uh, Nick Kroll, along with Bette Midler, and uh, Conrad Burnin, you know, reprising the roles as Gomez, Maticia, Wednesday, you know, Uncle Fester, Grandmama, Lurch, <laughs> and also Snoop Dogg as Cousin It. <laughs> so. And Wallace Shawn, uh, providing the voice of Mr. Mustella, who happens to be Cyrus's lawyer. I mean, you just sometimes you're suddenly picture him as as the character in <laughs> in the movie uh, The Princess Bride, because I was expecting for him to say inconceivable, <laughs> but that's not the case. And Bill Hader. Uh, because, of course, you may remember her from, you know, a lot of uh, movies and stuff, too. And, you know, comedian himself. You know, he, he was great as uh, Cyrus Strange, who's the villain of the story. As the scientist who claimed that he's the biological father for Wednesday. Um, animation is still as uh, great as the first one, so there's no doubt about it. Um, I know they have a blend of other music that they chose. Well, yeah, mostly pop culture music, as you may know. Um, I know the theme song had been sung by Christina Aguilera. And then they have some other rap songs that's by by Megan the T. Stallion or Rock Mafia. All these kinds. And, of course, Snoop Dogg. Um... It's funny, too, because uh, they were going to release this movie um, prior to uh, Hotel Transylvania, the latest sequel, but unfortunately that's been postponed, so they figured this would be the perfect time to release it, though. Um, and I know the fact that this was released on the same weekend as Venom to uh, Let There Be Carnage. <laughs> um, 
as well as the many scenes of New York, uh, the Sopranos uh, prequel. So at, at some point, at some point of another, I mean, it's a decent sequel. It's not great. It's still good in some ways. I mean, of course, it does focus on family love, and they're trying, and it does, uh, even with the the jokes that they they provided. I mean, some of which are macabre humor, and then other ones are just a little racy at times. But then again, this is a PG rated film for the whole family, so it's trying to tone it down a bit. Um, and despite of the story, I, I think it's um, still it's it's worth the wait, and I'm just glad I saw it, uh, along with my family. So, so anyway, that's Adam's family too, and I give the movie three stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.